the first step I took in creating this app was uh, gathering the data. And the way, I, the way I started with this was scraping the 100 most popular lists and getting all of the ticker labels and uh, ticker names uh, from the stock list and then formatting it into a CSV. Um, as you can see here, this is what I ended up doing. This, these are all the uh, ticker labels. And then I'll format, it, format all of that into this CSV right here. Soon after that, I uh, used the Robinhood API right here. And I used that to get five years of historical data from every single one of those tickers. And once I was done with getting that data, I worked on formatting all of that into a single CSV file. Uh, this file is all of the closed prices of every single stock over the past uh, 1300 days. Uh, so there is 1300 records in this file and there is uh, 101 uh, columns. Uh, the, the extra column is the date here and the 100 columns is every single ticker label as you can see here. <clears throat> Soon after doing that I uh, started working on the prototype. Uh, the prototype as you can see right over here. Uh, I actually built this using the Streamlit framework that was uh, coded in Python. Um, there was a drop down menu to select what uh, stock to look at and I would d display the stock data on this graph here. The x-axis, um, well that's supposed to be date, I probably should have changed that uh, label but it was just a prototype so I guess it didn't really matter too much. But the x value was the date and the y value is the closed price. After working on that, I started working on the machine learning portion. Um, originally, the plan was to use linear regression. Um, and if you don't know what linear regression is, it's basically just taking a bunch of uh, points, uh, y's and x's, and fitting it into this, this equation here, y equals mx plus p and using uh, machine learning to, to determine M and B, uh, which in this case is the slope and the y-intercept. Um, the reason why I was uh, kind of hesitant on just using plain linear progression for this is because I was worried about uh, underfitting. Um, Underfitting is when uh, the model does not learn enough from the training data, so it can't really make as much accurate uh, pre uh, predictions. And the best way to uh, solve this is by um, using a more complex model. So say if you use like a uh, version of polynomial pr uh, progression with uh, n, n equals 2 in, in, in this case. Um, this is a very this is very similar to the linear uh, regression problem, except that we have y equals mx squared plus mx plus b. The only thing that n equals two changes is the complexity of the polynomial. It actually adds a uh, brand new uh, slope factor in an, another place of input x. Um, as you can see here with the, with a the stock app. Right now, the polynomial is at zero, and we have just a basic straight line. The reason why this is is because of the y-intercept, um, and we just have, you know, our basic y-intercept. There's no slope. There's no x values. We're just taking an average of this whole closed price over this long period of uh, time, and as you can see here, this is a prime example of of underfitting. Um, so you can actually increase the complexity of, of, of the polynomial here. Here, here is, it's a little bit more accurate. Um, you, you can tell 
how accurate the uh, predictions are by these uh, statistics right here. I use the mean squared error and the R squared score to, to determine how accurate it, uh, the predictions are. The mean squared error is calculated by uh, drawing a line through the uh, data points and getting the uh, distance from each one of the data points to that line. And usually the line is just the uh, mean. The error is calculated in this function here with the mean squared error. We're actually uh, s s subtracting the closed test with the closed predicted. So these, are, these would be the uh, test values for the predicted prices. You know, this would be the uh, test values for the closed prices. And this would be the predicted values for the closed prices. Uh, generally, you'd want this uh, mean square error to be as low as possible. Um, right. And then we have our R squared score, which is calculated here. Uh, we calculate it much the same way as the mean squared er error. We have the uh, closed test and our uh, closed predicted. Uh, we just use those two to calculate the accuracy of the model. As you can see here, the more complex the polynomial is, the more accurate that the model becomes. As you can see there. <clears throat> Yeah, so the, so the mean squared error drops to 26 and the R squared score drops to 0 0.86. Let's see. Um, and also, the only downside with this is that you also run a risk of overfitting the uh, model. What does that mean exactly? Well, overfitting is when a machine learning model it tends to overtrain on the uh, data that means that it won't be able to generalize well for the predicted outputs. So I figure the uh, best way to, uh, to a comment that is to use this graph here to, to show the uh, learning curves. So if, if we turn it up to a high po polynomial like seven, yeah, we're gonna plot the errors here. All right, so our uh, training error at the start, it's zero, and it seems to, to stay that way throughout the entire data set. But at the start, it has a very high, incredibly high uh, val validation error. The uh, val validation error is the mean squared error for the uh, test data set. But as you can see, it begins to uh, drop around four iterations. This is because um, one of the best ways to uh, combat o overfitting is by uh, feeding more data into your model. That way it begins to drop in errors. Let's see here, where is that thing at? Right. You can also use this to try and um, predict uh, or combat underfitting. One example of, of, of underfitting can be seen here. Um, let's, see, let's, try, let's try to zoom into this a little bit. So as you can see here, this is a classic textbook definition of underfitting our uh, training data. We have our um, training errors. They slowly go up with more and more it, um, um, iterations. Um, it starts to do a steady decline, but there's still quite a few errors. And then our validation errors tend to spike up, but they begin to uh, drop after a while, yet there's still quite a few test errors. Um, you might as well see that there's a huge gap between the uh, test errors and validation errors. This means that it's um, it's not doing very well on the uh, tra the uh, training data, and it's also not doing very well on the testing data here. So that's also another thing to to watch out for. I would suggest probably the uh, best way to uh, use this thing is to 
keep it at a polynomial of about two or three. You know, kind of keeps the accuracy pretty well. Uh, let's go for three actually. Might be a little bit better. Yeah, as you can see, the validation error. Oh, it's still pretty. It's not. It's, it's not too bad. It's not terrible, but it doesn't o o overtrain on the uh, data. So this is this this is pretty good for predicting uh, new stock prices. Now, one of the downsides with this app is that um, you know if the data is too is too complicated. You know, it's it's not really the most accurate in predicting new new stocks. So let's say um, let's go back to to American Airlines again. The um, machine learning algorithm does not de detect this huge drop here, or this uh, this this huge drop here. Uh, the reason why is because it's a polynomial, and um, it's really hard to detect uh, changes in the uh, graph after the sudden rise. So I would say probably the best way to uh, fix this would be find some way to de detecting change in our uh, graph. So I would say maybe like taking a derivative, uh, you could probably try splitting it up. Um, you probably try doing a couple other things. Um, but at that point, you're not really doing polynomial regression. You're doing another type of AI algorithm that uh, I'm not too f familiar with yet. Uh, that being said, it's still pretty pretty accurate when working with simpler data. We got Apple.